welcome to the first part of the energy series in this series we are going to learn about what is energy what are the various types of energy and how they work so without any further delay let's solve this guy energy energy is the capacity of doing any kind of work whatever work we are doing playing walking moving any object concentrating on studies or doing anything we would require some kind of energy inside our body or else we won't be able to do those works even the machines required energy to perform a particular task so energy is something that is required by both living and non living beings to perform any task so what are the units that are used to calculate the amount of energy the unit of energy is exactly same as that of work which is joule okay so what is 1 joule what is this 1 joule of energy 1 joule is the amount of energy required by a body to displace 1 meter to have a displacement of 1 meter when a force of 1 newton is applied on it a body will displace 1 meter after force of 1 newton is applied on it and it would require a bit of energy to do that that energy is 1 joule and it is also the si unit that is system international unit for both work and energy the next unit of energy is calorie we have all heard about the term calorie Uh, which is regarded to weight weight loss weight gain now what is this calorie calorie is nothing but a unit of a specific type of energy which is heat energy one calorie is the amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature of 1 gram of water by 1 degree celsius this is the definition of one calorie so the minimum amount of energy that is required to raise the temperature of 1 gram of water to 1 degree celsius suppose the water is at say 40 degree celsius the temperature of water in order to make it 41 degree celsius 1 gram of water the energy that would be required is one calorie now what is its relationship with the previous unit that is joule One calorie is equal to four point two joule, and calories can also be measured in kilo calories. So one kilo calorie would be thousand calorie. We require a lot of energy to do all kinds of work in our day-to-day -day life. But how do we get that energy? The food we eat, the water we drink helps to build up that energy inside our body. When we work, we play, we exhaust ourselves and then we get tired. Our energy reserve is completely exhausted at that point of time. Then how do we regain our energy? Again we come back, we take rest, we eat food, we drink water and our body is re-energized. This is how our body works, but for the non-living things it works in a bit different way. So there are various forms of energy which we can see as like the light energy, the heat energy, the sound energy, electrical energy and mechanical energy which is one of the most important form of energy consisting of two parts potential energy and kinetic energy. We'll go into all these things into details but before that let me tell you some energy can be stored and reused some energy gets completely exhausted and has to be generated from the very beginning again and let's talk about mechanical energy or the energy inside every body what is mechanical energy mechanical energy is that energy that is associated with two things first the position of the object where the object is placed whether it's at a particular height from the ground 
or whether it's moving or it's at rest everything the position of the object is the first point that is considered while we are studying about mechanical energy the second point is the motion of the object if a body is moving then what is its speed how fast it's moving whether it's moving slow or not that is also another factor that is associated with mechanical energy what are the various forms of mechanical energy now let's talk about those the various forms of mechanical energy are potential energy and kinetic energy what is potential energy potential energy is the energy possessed by a body due to its position or its location where it's placed the position of the body would determine the amount of potential energy that the body is possessing next kinetic energy it's the energy possessed by a moving body a body that is in motion the motion which is caused by a particular energy from inside it that energy is the kinetic energy now if we are to calculate the total amount of mechanical energy possessed by a body the sum total would be the total amount of potential energy plus the total amount of kinetic energy we add those and we'll find the total amount of mechanical energy that is possessed by the body so let's talk about the first form of mechanical energy that is potential energy right now we read that potential energy is that energy which is due to which occurs due to the position of the body it is also the energy that is stored inside an object and the very good examples would be water stored in a dam which is about to be released that pressure creates that energy which is potential energy the second one can be the stretched string of a bow or a compressed spring all these are very good examples of potential energy as these all examples show that the energy which is stored inside the object can create motion or further any kind of work afterwards as you can see that the boy is getting ready for a race the energy stored inside the body of the boy helps him to push forward and start running the energy generated inside the beyblade when released helps it to rotate and move there are two forms of potential energy the first is gravitational potential energy and the second is elastic potential energy now we will go into the details of both of them so what is gravitational potential energy it is the potential energy possessed by the body due to its position any object that is placed from a certain height from the ground possesses gravitational potential energy gravitational potential energy of an object which has a mass say m and is placed at a height say h will be equal to the work done in lifting that object into that particular height that means the energy possessed by the object gravitational potential energy possessed by the object which has a mass of m and is at a height h will be equal to the work done in taking that object to that particular height so how do we calculate that now we already know force required to lift that body to the height h is nothing but the weight of the object now weight of the object can be calculated by m into g formula which is mass of the body into the gravitational force which we have already done in the last chapter if you want to know more details about it i will post the link in the description box below so force required in moving that object to that particular height is the weight of the object which is mass into gravitational force so the work done in doing that is force into displacement which is the height h in this case 
So force is ma mass into gravitational force which is mg multiplied by the displacement which is the height h in this case. So the total gravitational potential energy of the body would be mg into h that is mgh. This is a very important formula noted down so that while the numericals come you might be able to solve it properly. Now we will understand the gravitational potential energy in a better way by looking at a few examples. Here the boy is at a height from the ground generating gravitational potential energy helping him to jump further. So gravitational potential energy depends on two factors mass and height because its formula is mass into gravitational force into height since the acceleration due to gravity or gravitational force is constant which is 9.8 Newton. This is constant for earth and so the mass can vary mass can change the object can have more or less mass the height of the object from the ground can increase or decrease so these are the two factors on which the gravitational potential energy depends upon both of them are directly proportional to the gravitational potential energy more the mass of the body more energy is required and more the height of the object is from the ground then also the gravitational potential energy will increase the next type of potential energy is the elastic potential energy. What is it? The potential energy possessed by a body due to its orientation that is how it is adjusted. That energy is called the elastic potential energy. Any energy which is formed due to compression or if we are stretching something which occurs due to tension force that energy is called elastic potential energy. Let me explain this to you in a better way by the following examples. Here the boy is stretching a rubber band with a piece of paper creating tension force which generates elastic potential energy. So here we come to the end of the first video of the energy series. We will make more videos of the entire chapter so please keep watching our channel and if this video has been informative and helpful to you please go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get more such informative videos and please please share our videos as much as you can as we are trying to spread education freely to everyone.